A child born in 1953, the structure of DNA has just been discovered. 1989, and this baby's genetic fingerprint can be identified. The first single gene for Huntington's disease has been discovered. 2003, this child's entire genetic code can now be read and faulty genes in his DNA can be adjusted. Another birth, but this time no ordinary miracle. The baby's sex and eye color were decided before she was conceived. Also her hair, the shape of her nose, and her intelligence. The date of her birth? Perhaps only a few years from now. She's born of a revolution in genetics, a revolution where each new step brings new questions of ethics and responsibility. And as the promise of the science gets greater, so the questions for all of us get bigger. The 26th of December 2002. A press conference in the USA. I'm very, very pleased to announce that the first baby clone uh, is born. This claim by a religious cult, the Raelians, is almost certainly a hoax. But a cloned baby is the very real aim of some scientists around the world. It's the ultimate goal in a science where some fear the pace of development may be outstripping our ability to examine, consider and weigh up their consequences. There are 72,000 experiments going on in the world today dealing with DNA. 72,000 experiments, and we've just begun. What we're doing is we're short-circuiting millions of years of trial and error and speeding up the process of gene transfer in a short moment. So I believe, rationally, I would have to say and go on record, I think it's insane. Insane or not? It's the amazing idea that we can manipulate and control our genetic inheritance that drives modern medicine as it attempts to outwit the major diseases caused by our genes. When it comes to medical research, any medical technology that works is very quickly accepted by the public. Ethicists may not like it, but scientists may not like it, but the public, if they believe it works, will accept it. And legislation will always follow. Ethics has always followed science. It's never led it. And I don't see any reason why genetics is going to be any different. Ethicists would love to tell geneticists what to do, but I'm afraid the geneticists aren't going to listen. As the debate rages on, this program will take you to the frontiers of genetic research. It's a place where scientists admit that often they don't know why their experiments work, but where there's no doubt that genetic medicine is showing extraordinary promise. In the future, we're hoping we can inject stem cells into a patient, and those stem cells will repair worn-out body parts. I think a cloning is probably the most powerful technology that humans ever develop. Our hope is that the work that we and other scientists are doing will one day result in consigning genetic diseases to the history book. To find out what the public thinks about the developments that are revolutionizing our genetic future, Discovery commissioned a unique international poll across eight countries. Our poll found that many people share the overwhelming optimism of scientists that genetics will decide the future of the human race. Most support was found in Brazil, least in the UK and US, but even here, two out of five people agree. As we go on, I think it'll eventually, you know, um, really influence our medicine and the way we treat people. I think genetic developments will be just the future of medicine, I think. Um, a lot of ailments are are the result of mutations in certain genes or deletions, and if we can address that, um, we'll just open you know doors all over the place. I mean that's a it'll be a, a great advancement, and I think that's where everything is headed is to gen gene therapy if if it can be perfected. I think there's a potential for great improvement with genetics. I think there's a lot of diseases that can be helped greatly within a short time. I think there's a lot of hype involved in it and, you know, there are other things that are going to probably do more to form what's going on than just the genetics. Much is promised by genetic science, the manipulation of our genes, but can it deliver? And if it does, are we ready to take on the responsibility of meddling with the very fabric of life itself?
or DNA. London, in 50 years' time. We've imagined a world where genetic science is a part of everyday life for families like this. For this generation, genes can be chopped and changed at will. Designer babies are the norm. And a cure for the last great killer disease of the Western world has arrived at last. Animal genes are manipulated to suit human needs and appetites. Unhappy being bald, losing out with the ladies, have the Magi Hair Free Gene implanted into your scalp now. Am I going to need that gene? A genetic cure for baldness is some way off. But from the moment the secrets of our genome were discovered, scientists wondered if they could manipulate our genes. This big idea is gene therapy. For diseases caused by single gene defects, like cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy or haemophilia, gene therapy seems like the ultimate promise. This man is living proof that gene therapy can work. He is the only person in the world to have been apparently cured of the devastating genetic disease haemophilia after taking part in a pioneering gene therapy trial. Diseases such as haemophilia are caused by malfunctioning genes. The idea behind gene therapy is simple. Why not insert a fully working gene into the DNA to do the job properly? Gene therapy uses a virus to insert the new gene into the nucleus, much as an envelope carries a letter. The gene randomly inserts itself into the genome. Now it can be read and correct instructions passed out of the nucleus to the protein-making factories which in turn produce the building blocks of our bodies. But gene therapy has its risks. Indeed, in some trials, it's proved fatal. In 1999, teenager Jesse Gelsinger died while undergoing experimental gene therapy for the liver complaint OTC. The virus being used to carry the replacement gene triggered a huge immune response that killed him. My problem with gene therapy is not in the principle of it, but its execution. The young Jesse Gelsinger, this young man was not uh, um, near death at all. He was leading a fairly healthy life. He died almost immediately from the actual therapy. So he died and he didn't need to. Other mistakes have arisen from gene therapy. Children with immunodeficiency disease who are forced to live in a germ-free environment seemed like ideal candidates for the treatment. That was until two French boys developed leukemia when the randomly inserted gene designed to cure the condition disrupted a neighboring gene called LMO2. This caused blood cells to divide uncontrollably, resulting in the cancer. 